If you've watched some of my previous videos, you might have noticed the major flaw of this channel. It's all me. They're my ideas, my scripts, my acting, voice, my editing. I get some help from my family with the filming, and most of my films go out with the seal of approval from my daughters of, meh, it's okay, which is the highest seal of approval a dad can get from his daughters. So unless I start getting some user-suggested topics or the feedback on my videos suggests that people want to see more of my interpretation of academic research on cargo bikes and, and urban mobility, it's going to be mostly my ideas. Although on this video, I'm going to try and fix that a little bit. In this video, I am going to present the opinions of seven people who ride cargo bikes here in the city. I came up with a highly scientific questionnaire and I've asked them all to respond to the questions. Now, it is a biased sample of people because they're all still riding their cargo bikes and they enjoy riding their cargo bikes, as you'll soon find out. I've had to do some light editing of the videos and hopefully none of the respondents think that I make them look like Homer Simpson in Rock Bottom. So without further ado, here are the opinions of seven people who ride cargo bikes in my city. <clears throat> Hi, my name's Matt Dance. Okay, uh, I'm Sean. Hi, I'm Kelly. I'm a mom of two kids. Hi, I am Sarah and I live here in Edmonton. Hello, my name is Darren Markland. Uh, I am a physician and I have been riding a cargo bike before most of you even knew what one was. Hey, I'm Lisa Brown. My name is Mike. We're going to start with the lightning round. How many cargo bikes have you owned? One. Two. 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 And three. Two. Two. One. Hmm, well, this style just the one, but we've got two more plus I had a cargo trailer before. So How long have you been a cargo bike owner? Three years uh, in April. Uh, since 2016, so yeah. Five years. Uh, four and a half years. Depends what you define as a cargo bike. A year and, oh, no, I'll say, yeah, a year and a half. This one is two years, maybe five years. Bach feet, long tail, or trike or something else? Uh, long tail. Uh, we have a Bach feet and a mid tail. Bach feet or long tail? Or? Both. <laughs> okay. Three. Um, Bach feet, long tail, and a trike. All of them. Bach feet. Bach feet is the way to go. Uh, acoustic or electric? It's electric. 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 Uh, the trike and the back feet are both electric and the long tail is acoustic. Both. Electric. Electric. If you were to buy a new cargo bike soon, what would be different from your current one? I would buy a, uh, a bucket. Oh, that's a tricky one. Um, different cargo bike. Uh, I really enjoy like the look of the Riesa Mueller loads and pack steers that have the full suspension. Be interested in trying one of them out? I might be interested in a bigger cargo area if we were to replace our back feeds because ours is on the shorter side and I'm a little jealous of the Urban Arrow people. <laughs> I don't know because I just bought my back feet, which is the one I wanted. Uh, I would be divorced and my <laughs> wife would have the whole dug already. Uh, I think we would go, if we were adding another cargo bike to the family, we'd probably get a mid-tail. Okay. Yeah, electric, definitely. Ooh, good question. They come with uh, uh, brake lights and signal lights now, which I think is pretty sweet. Uh, when you were thinking about your first cargo bike, what were you intending to carry? My kids and groceries. Kids. 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 So I was looking for something that would take three kids. Everything, actually. I didn't have a car, so it was just a way of picking up everything. It was definitely the, the original motivation was to carry our daughter. Okay. What do you now typically carry? My kids and groceries. Okay. <laughs> Uh, kids, groceries, lumber sometimes. Um, I've got uh, gardening supplies in my cargo bike right now. Groceries, kids, lumber, everything. <laughs> I'd carry kids, groceries, shelving, printers, everything. Coffee and supplies to make coffee. So definitely still her. 
Um, but I don't think we anticipated using it for grocery runs as much as we do, or like oddball things like it's the easiest and best thing to go and pick up our Christmas tree every year. Um, uh, the, actually, the baby likes to go on the back of the other bikes, so mostly groceries. Have you reduced your number of household cars due to having a cargo bike? Not yet, but that's the eventual goal. Cargo bike? Yes. Very much so. Uh, have you reduced your number of household cars due to having a cargo bike? Yes. Yes, we reduced to one when we got the trike, and this year we reduced to zero. Well, I reduced it before having a cargo bike. And it was already 11. A cargo bike was just necessary because I didn't have it. Uh, we didn't have one cargo bike for a long time, um, but I think that we still have one car. Yeah, we went from two to one. Uh, have you chosen not to buy an additional car because of your cargo bike? No, we we haven't considered buying a car at all, so, it, okay. yeah. Okay. No, uh, we just reduced, we went from a truck and a hatchback to zero. Have you reduced your number of household cars due to having a cargo bike? Yes. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Okay. No, I can't afford cars because I have too many bikes. Uh, I don't think we would get a second car anyway, um, but I think it's probably reduced our use of transit and car share. And we certainly delayed purchase and like purchase something else. We wanted to get the EV, but now we're like, well, we'll just wait until the car we have it totally dies. And make most of our trips with the uh, bike. Uh, okay, now on to your long answer ones. Why did you choose to buy a cargo bike? I wanted a uh, I wanted a transportation option that wasn't CO2 intensive that would meet. 80 or 90 percent of my daily commute needs and moving kids and moving groceries is typically what I use a, a vehicle for so um, right now I'm offsetting about 2,000 kilometers a year of driving with a bike that is meeting most of my transportation needs. Um, well my wife was biking to work uh, with, a kid tr with a chariot and it got stolen so we wanted something that we could just take with us and wasn't dragging behind a bike. Um, her path to work was mostly multi-use paths, but had a few sections where there was nothing. So she was off on the side of the road uh, in a dirt path and just getting something that was all together made the most sense. Uh, what happened was I had gotten hooked on biking and uh, I was pulling the kids to daycare and our trailer got stolen from outside the daycare and I wasn't willing to quit. So uh, I got something easier to lock up than a trailer. Because all those, um, those, those trailers, they come apart without tools because that's what they're designed to do. And so it's really easy. It's hard to lock up securely. Um, I thought it was going to be a good way to get around the city. We were living downtown adjacent and the new bike lanes were there and it was going to make it a lot quicker and a lot easier to get around compared to driving a car. Uh, I was carless for a long time. Uh, I was carless because I was lucky enough to live close to work um, and essentially enough that I could ride everywhere. Uh, a cargo bike was an extension of that. Yeah, so actually the sort of the origin story for us is that I was living in Europe um, and I spent some time in Copenhagen and the Christiania bikes are everywhere there. I guess they're, they're technically trikes. Um, but you'd see, uh, you know, caregivers toddling around with like four, five, six kids in the hospital. And I thought they were so cool. And I wasn't intending to start a family at the time, but I thought if I ever did, I would want something like that. Um, so actually, I think we started doing research when we were pregnant. Do you think your cargo bike was a worthwhile investment? 100%. In fact, I'm disappointed that I bought a low-end bike and I really should have bought a high-end bike. Absolutely. Absolutely. We're big enthusiasts of cargo bikes. Uh, it changed my life completely. <laughs> um, we moved, we sold all of our cars and changed our lifestyle because of it. Absolutely, I then bought two more. Okay, yeah. Uh, do you think your cargo bike was a worthwhile investment? Absolutely.
Yes, it was it was um, kind of funny because we had secured an order for one and put down our deposit and then the car that we had that we were planning to run into the ground in the next five years died. <laughs> so we had to go out and buy a used car. So we kind of had this like double hit while I was on EI on uh, parental leave. But I think um, in terms of like daily use, the bike is definitely used far more than the car and they cost the same. So. It's kind of an, it'll be an interesting comparison over time. Obviously the car gets more kilometers because when we're using it, we're going to like visit family out of the city or we do road trips out to BC to visit family. But in terms of like a daily piece of transportation, the bike is definitely like far enough in terms of number of trips. What incentivizes you to ride your cargo bike instead of driving? <laughs> it's fun. Riding my bike is a lot of fun. And when I, when I pick my daughter up in the car, she's annoyed that we're driving. So she even finds it fun sitting on the back of the bike. Uh, I, it's a much more enjoyable experience. Um, I get to be outside. A lot of the paths that we're on, um, that's nice scenery, you get some fresh air, uh, especially if I'm going to uh, like South Common or Costco, the 91st path is just a beautiful place to be. It's just a much more enjoyable experience. You're not stuck in traffic. It's a fun time. Well, first off, I don't own a car, so if I wanted to drive, I'd have to walk 20 minutes to go pick up a rental, which I did on purpose because I understand that friction, I understand friction and nudges. I'm a Freakonomics fan, and so I intentionally don't want to drive, so I intentionally made it hard to drive. Oh, so many things, but mostly I like that I get fresh air, I like that I get outside, I like that I can see what's going on, I can stop if something looks interesting. Um, I like to get the kids out so they get fresh air. I require no incentive. If I drive, I don't feel... You're on that, I kind of got out of that. Oh, part of it is that, you know, we live in the core of the city, um, it's busy, uh, like I just don't like dealing with traffic. I actually don't hate driving if I'm out on the highway, um, and there isn't a lot of traffic around me, but uh, definitely having the ease of not having to deal with that. Also, a lot of the routes that we're going to, or a lot of the places we're going to, are direct. So it's a direct route for us to bike to downtown, but it's not for um, going and you know, using our vehicle. It's a direct route to a grocery store, but it isn't if we're using a vehicle. This park, which we come to every weekend with our daughter, we have a safe bike route the whole way. Um, and it actually would probably take us twice as long to drive. So in terms of like our destinations, most of the time the bike is faster. Um, well, not being stuck in traffic, it's fun to drive, fun to ride, and I get to be like a smug cyclist. What disincentivizes you to ride your cargo bike instead of driving? Infrastructure. Um, slip lanes are deadly and scary to try and cross, especially with a kid on the back. Um, bike lanes that are just paint on the ground, sharrows, everything that is not supporting me being separate from vehicles, other, other vehicles, is a disincentive to me riding my bike. Usually just infrastructure. Um, a lot of the times they'll be, I've gone somewhere, I'm trying to get home with a big load of groceries or something, and I'm on, and the sidewalk runs out, the multi-use path runs out, and I'm stuck struggling how to actually get around. If it's really far away, if the infrastructure sucks, if it, if there's really, really crappy weather, but not so crappy as to make it dangerous to drive to. So like torrential rain and I needed something to stay dry. Um, the thing I, that's the most frustrating is lack of infrastructure, um, especially in the suburban area where I live. And bad snow clearing in the winter makes it more difficult. Instead of driving nothing. Okay. If the, the trail conditions or the road conditions aren't great, uh, sometimes the destinations are a little hostile for for cyclists. So if there's a lot of highways or or big car approaches to get there, I can think of um, recently with the Kingsway and they closed the only safe bike route. So if I was to go back there, I would drive. Okay. Uh, do you have any additional advice for new cargo bike owners or the cargo bike curious? Um, reach out to the uh, Yeg Bike hashtag and uh, say that you're interested in buying a cargo bike and I guarantee you someone will get back to you and let you know that you could ride one of theirs to try it out. Uh, no, we're just uh, 
big fan of cargo bikes. Like I said, we save all kinds of money not having to have a car. That's your insurance payments, gas payments that you don't have to pay for anymore. And you know, all of my needs can be met with cargo bikes. Just do it. You won't regret it. <laughs> Just get one. <laughs> you will find more and more excuses to use it and you won't stop uh, using it and every day becomes an adventure and boring trips like grocery shopping or the school run become fun again. <laughs> you know, get an, uh, get an electric uh, powered cargo bike. Uh, if it's your first foray into anything e-powered, you're just going to giggle. Um, it smooths everything out, it makes everything easy, and uh, it's worthwhile. Yeah, there's really no drawbacks other than charging the thing. I learned something today. Don't force your interviews because winter is coming and you're worried that no one will want to stand outside on a cold, snowy day, and therefore you do your interview on one of the most blustery days here in the city. Apologies to Lisa and Mike. They had some other very interesting things to say, but as you probably heard in the low quality audio, it was just way too windy. The other thing that I learned is people who ride cargo bikes really like riding their cargo bikes. Everyone said they would absolutely buy another one and keep riding and they encourage people to get another cargo bike. It also seems that back feats might be slightly more popular, but what you need your cargo bike for and the type you choose is up to you and you should really do your research before you get one and jump into being a cargo bike owner. But they all did suggest going electric. I can say from my personal experience, that's the way to go. I was thinking about getting an acoustic cargo bike and I almost did, but now that I have the electric one, it just smooths out the hills and makes going up even fairly steep hills with uh, my wife or my daughters quite easy. But I think one of the main things I learned, as you heard from most of our riders, is you need good infrastructure. People are not gonna ride any bike if you don't have good infrastructure. If you wanna see more about good infrastructure, I'm gonna post a link somewhere up here in a previous video I did talking about the level of traffic stress. I also have plans for an upcoming video where I talk about where to put your good infrastructure. So that's it for this episode of Bike Bike Nudge Nudge. Please, if you liked me interviewing other cargo bike riders and hearing their opinions, consider giving this video a like. And if you like the things that I put on this channel, please subscribe. Yo, my name's Darren and my rapping is murder because most of you'll be dead before I get my bruiser. I'm gonna use that. Just proving we're bad, we're better than the rest. Okay. That's my questions. Okay. Thank you very How'd much. How'd I do? Good. <laughs>